We've got the bad boy, Joey Janela on the sessions. I didn't know that you were an action figure collector. Yeah, I uh, I have a lot of action figures. I blew a lot of my AEW money on action figures. So if I ever become homeless, I, I do have like a savings account in this room right here. Oh, good. That I can probably last another six months on earth with. Well, that's like the Zack Ryder. Sorry, Matt Cardona. Old habits die hard, don't they? Um, that's like the Matt Cardona system of life, right? He's got like all of his action figures. He sells them off. He makes a pretty penny off them. It was one of those things I think everyone always kind of made fun of him for. And then when I had him on this show and I was talking to him about it, I was like, oh, shit, you actually like he invests and he sells them. And he's like, he runs like a side hustle with it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's also because of him. It's also because of him and his podcast that these figures are going for so much these days. <laughs> so I, I, I have to up. credit him. I have to credit him for uh, wasting a ton of my ton of my uh, money. Oh, good. Well, listen, you gotta you gotta spend your money somewhere, right? You can't take it to the grave with you. You might as well spend no, it on shit that you like. No. Why not? Spend it, spend it now on toys. Make more later. That's my my. Exactly. Oh, there oh, we go. There he goes. <laughs> Come on, Terry. We were just on, talking Terry. before we started the record about like how everyone, like when you're trying to like set up the zoom calls and like finding the things to balance your camera on, if you're on your phone or your laptop, trying to get like the eye line, it can all be a shit show. What are you balancing on right now? A glass of water and a Terry funk figure. Yeah. A small, like a small, like cocktail glass and uh, a Terry a mint on card. Terry funk action figure is like the, the back piece of this, uh, this setup. Um, okay. So, so I've, noticed that yes you have action figures behind you you're a collector another thing i've noticed since we've jumped on this call is dare i say you're getting more jacked are you stronger you look very strong right now very strong i've been uh, <laughs> I've, I've been flaunting it around the independence in the last couple of months i've been breaking suplex world records all over mm. the world yeah. um and uh take that taz yeah i think it's just the position i'm in right now because i don't want to uh give you guys a nice crotch shot uh but uh yeah i'm kind of hunched over but i'm kind of i'm kind of digging this right now because it kind of does make me look pretty jacked up you look huge yeah you look like very shredded though i will also like pair this with the fact that i was um doing my due diligence as a, a journalist and flipping through your instagram and i saw a picture of you under like the arches in um st louis also shredded like had like well, a you had like an app situation happening are you a body guy? A, no, no, I'm not a body guy. I, I still, I still drink a lot of beer. Mm. I still have a bit of a belly. It depends. I guess some days it depends what I eat before. And it depends on the bloat because once I get <sighs> bloated, I'm kind of screwed. It's over. But Nick, but Nick Gage was claiming that in that picture, I Photoshopped my abs on. That's what Nick <laughs> Gage claims. He goes, what's, he says, what is that? What's going on here? He goes, you Photoshopped these abs on? I go, no, man. I, I showed him the, I showed him the, uh, the the round of pictures and uh he's like all right whatever man but i think he Some still thinks i photoshop my abs day on. sometimes sometimes it's a good day you get the good lighting um sometimes if you i would say like often if you've had some cocktails the night before and you're like a little dehydrated the body yes. can look great the next day that that's what that's uh that's really the secret right there i think it's <laughs> Sadly, a dehydration. it is i know it really is i think the night before we drank quite quite a lot so uh there you go usually that is i noticed that yeah i noticed that i i think i I definitely when i'm dehydrated from a night of drinking i definitely look more more lean but it it happens no Um, complete body guy no 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 but from here it looks like it so i you know i'll give credit where i see that credit is due and you you look great you've got the action figures everything is going great with joey janela um it does feel that way i feel like since i mean You've had, you've always had like this cool buzz a- around you, but I feel like since your time now away from AEW, you really have your career in your own hands. What's like the business model to getting like, not that you ever weren't doing that hustle. Cause I know you were always still doing other indie shows and whatnot while you were with AEW, but now what's it like being back in like that regular grind? Uh, at first it was kind of, uh, kind of difficult to get back into that. Because when I was in AW, I was doing independent bookings, but I was really only doing GCW on right. Saturdays. Okay. Now, with my extensive ADD, probably 
you know, doctors said I, ha- I was one of the worst cases when I was a child. It's very hard to keep track of dates and getting back to that where I was in 2017, <sighs> mm-hmm. 2018, 2019, just being unorganized. But I'm really grasping it this time. And um, my goal is just to basically make as much money as I was in AEW. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to work twice as hard because you're not working once a week to make that money. And I'm not charging promoters an arm and a leg to do their shows. That's why pr- promoters love me. Uh, a lot of people, they would leave AEW and they would be charging a ton of money for appearances, a ton of money to wrestle. I just love professional wrestling. So yeah. what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get as much bookings as I can. And of course, I'm my body is rocked and socked from all the I craziness bet. I've been doing and all the travel, but it's worth it. You know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, I've always loved traveling the world. I've always loved, you know, meeting, meeting fans all over the place. And when you get mm-hmm. to do that three, four times a week, it's, it's everything I always wanted. So what is that like in terms of, obviously you get like an adrenaline boost from going out there, wrestling, doing the matches that you love to do, meeting the fans, getting to do your own thing. But as you just said, your body is beat up. Where do you kind of find the balance on taking care of your body versus like going out and doing all of these bookings and stuff? Like, how does that work for you? I always talk to John about this and I feel like you, you guys are obviously very much so cut from the same cloth. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of, when I was at AEW, we, we, you know, of course, we have the doctors in the back. We have the massage therapists. We have, you know, we have everything at, at our hands. Uh, so when I was beat up uh, from my, uh, during my AEW run, I would just put my name on a piece of paper, walk into an office, and I would have all the resources right there to make yeah. me feel better. Now, uh, I was like, I did a couple shows, a couple months worth of shows, and I realized, man, I'm beat up. Uh, I had a match with Super Crazy um, in Vegas. Uh, it was all out weekend. Uh, that was my, I believe that was my second match of that weekend. And I really couldn't get through the match. I got through it, but mm-hmm. I have a, a sacrum problem where that pops out of place and then it's hard to walk. It's hard to stand oh. up. So uh, after that, I, I had a show the next day. I go to myself, I go, if I don't do something about this, um, I'm not going to be able to wrestle tonight. So someone told me something about the joint chiropractor. It's like a chain chiropractor. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay, you pay 80 bucks a month. You walk in for five minutes and they adjust you. They, oh. You tell them what's wrong and they just put, pop you back into place. And I think that's, I, man, that's. 80 bucks a, a month. That's amazing. Yeah. You get four, you get four adjustments once a week. Um, they're all over the country. Yeah. Um, basically every major city we run in, I can just go on Google and type in the joint. There's one within 20 minutes. Yeah. So, oh, so I think that's, it's very, I think it's like, if you're, especially if you're an independent wrestler, you don't have health insurance. Um, there's something you gotta, you know, take into account. $80 sure. a month isn't, isn't anything crazy. And no, I gets me through my three bookings a week. So, so at what that. point do you, um, strike the balance between like changing up some of your style to help your body to, to have a little bit more longevity with your career? Is it obviously it's hard to do that. You're people expect a certain thing from you versus what your body is telling you what to do. What's like that internal conversation? Uh, I think I've only gotten crazier to be honest. I know what, like you're like, yeah, like red flag. You got to slow it down. Or that's what, that's a, up. Yeah. Brett Lauderdale. He's like, you, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing every show everywhere. And I go, I don't know. That's just what I do now. I, I, I don't it's know why I do it. Sometimes I go, Sometimes in my mind, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to take it easy this weekend. And then we get to the show and I don't take it easy. Is Um, it the crowd? Is it the expectation? Is it that that's just what you do? Like what, what kind of leans into that when you have it in your mind that you might kind of pump the brakes a little bit and take it a bit easy in a match? 
And then you go, now, just kidding. Here we go. Let's light everything on fire. <laughs> let's light everything on fire. Uh, it's just, uh, I can go in the ring these days and I, I, I am a charismatic human that I can go in the ring and I can jerk around for 15 minutes and get away mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's like, uh, you know, people like, like guys that go see a, a, a dominatrix maybe or something. Maybe that's, maybe that's <laughs> what I'm into. I don't know. Maybe I just like putting my body through torture. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's just, uh, this is how I was before I went to AEW, and then I mm-hmm. calmed down a little bit there because there's people to say knock it the f- off. <laughs> um, Who but now were the I'm people like, saying to knock it the f- off? Well, this is a therapy oh. session for me as well, by the way, because I feel like I'm mir- mirroring conversations that I have with John. I'm just having it with you. So, Same well, no thing. one's telling John to knock it the f- off. I, but I think people probably are to a degree. I am. <laughs> I'm certainly yeah, trying are. to knock it the f- off, but I don't you know are. if anybody else is. Uh, no, they're just people like, hey, you know, what are you doing? Is uh, most of my time in AW was in front of no crowds in the uh, dark abyss of Jacksonville, Florida, at 3 a.m. Sure. sure, you know, wrestling uh, random indie dudes. Uh, right. So there was a time they were like, all right, you can you can take it a little easy here. But when I first came in there, it was like pedal to the metal i had had john's first match yeah which we, yeah, we just absolutely you, yeah love that match uh, i loved it too it's just like i went crazy and then i wrestled omega a couple matches and went crazy there and then by the time that I did the cracker barrel match at all out which i went crazy there i was moonsaulting the top off the top rope onto the floor and then nothing right right and then by the time we got to november uh i think it was full gear that year i was done that's when my back started to, my spine was messed up and they were like i go i don't know i'm i'm messed up to the doctor and uh they said all right let's get an mri and let's get an x-ray and then uh they go yo your, your spine is shaped like an s great I go, Perfect. Oh, well well that's my fault uh, <laughs> self-induced Guilty scoliosis. as charged yeah but you know now i'm just like an uncaged animal I, really no one can tell me what to do Oh my and uh that's it i'm just wild that's it uh, punk rock, <laughs> that's just punk, the way that it goes punk rock baby let's go <laughs> okay i'm gonna come back to that in a second i want to go back to young you with the adhd we were actually just talking with my producers right before you jumped on the call we were talking about adhd and being diagnosed with it and like what all goes into that so what was it like for you as a kid and having a doctor tell you, you had one of the worst cases they've ever seen oh man uh we, we, there was definitely something wrong in elementary school teachers realized and that's when ADD kind of first started becoming a thing it's a big buzzword uh, yeah the big buzzwords and when I was first coming up in this school system was ADHD and lice that was the two things that got, <laughs> I got two got options pick a lane you yeah, can't have yeah, both yeah <laughs> yeah but uh I think I did have both to be honest that's why I, <laughs> My mom threw out all my toys in kindergarten. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I was on Ritalin my whole life. And um, Ritalin kind of uh, didn't do shit uh, besides make me uh, not want to eat anything all day. And uh, just bizarre. Um, So as soon as high school was over, I got off. I got off the Ritalin for sure. Could you like but, feel that though, like as a kid? Because I've I've not been on Ritalin, but I feel like when you're a kid and you're trying to figure out, like, wait, why do I feel so weird all of a sudden? Because you does it does it just bring you like way down? It brought me, it definitely brought me down for sure. Um, I didn't like it at all, it, mostly yeah. because mostly because the way it suppressed my appetite and whatnot, especially in high school and stuff. I was. I was like 95 pounds yeah. you know, as a kid. So as soon as high school was over, I got off of it. But ADD is more difficult than being a child with ADD. Sure. Um, because like most relationships I get into, partner doesn't understand. They think you're, they say you're lazy or you don't want to do this. And it causes depression. It causes bunch of things Mm -hmm. you know sometimes I just don't want to do anything 
And that's not because I don't want to do anything. It's because my ADD is telling me not to. Uh, organization. That's interesting because I feel like a lot of people assume that you hear like ADD or ADHD or like, oh my God, this person must just be bouncing off the walls all the time. Or yeah, like the organization, like their mind is just everywhere all the time. But there's the other side of it where you just want to check out completely, right? Yeah, my organization skills are the worst. Uh, that's why my apartment right now is probably a mess because, and th- and that's why I work best on the road. I think. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's why, like, the independence is like that's where I want to be because, you know, I can go away for three weeks and not have to deal with shit. Yeah. Of course, sometimes I'm my bills are. Late. I was just gonna say, are you brutal <sighs> at paying your bills? You must be. brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal every month. <laughs> I uh, know. I am absolutely brutal at paying my bills. That's the only thing I have to, but I could go away on the road for three weeks for a month and just like check out. I don't have to organize anything. The most I have to do is go to a laundry mat and then throw my crumpled up clothes back into my suitcase. That is the, besides just, it's just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling and travel. Mm-hmm. I can, I can, ha- I can handle that life. Um, yeah. That's why I, I wish, uh, you know, you know, uh, I don't think, I don't know. It might be that and uh, <laughs> concussions. I don't, I don't know if I should say that, but it's just a combination right, of right? the, the yeah. two is like, you know, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But, uh, Does that ever scare you thinking about that? It did. It did. But now I know how to protect myself. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, stuff happens. You get concussions. It's a contact sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone gets concussions. There is nobody exempt from concussions in wrestling. Sure. Uh, but yeah, no, it was scary. But now I, that I know how to protect myself, and I, I teach a lot of younger guys coming up and girls. I say, listen, they they come up. I said this. This is how you protect yourself in this situation. If you want to take this bump or do that, this is how you protect yourself. This is how you don't get a concussion. Yeah. So. Even even when someone does get a concussion, I know the signs and symptoms to know when it's serious enough that you have to go sure. to the, the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm very conscious on that. I'm very aware. You know, I joke around about it sometimes, mm-hmm. but this is not very good. But but I do know the signs and symptoms and how to protect yourself and and uh, and, and be the best. Because a concussion. I had a concussion in 2012 that sent me to seizures. Oh shit! Kind of sidelined me for like months. What uh, what it, happened? It, like how? What was like the bump you took that that happened? I threw a drop kick. I threw a drop kick on the floor. I believe it was at Pat Buck. I believe at a PWS show, and I just didn't tuck my chin and smack my head on the hardwood floor, and I was out for a good like eight minutes. Oh went my to god! Seizures. When I woke up, the EMTs were there. That's how bad it was. But it, it induced a whole panic disorder. It gave me, for, for, for years, uh, I was light sensitive. And a light sense, sometimes light sensitivity would cause a panic attack. Oh, my God. So that, that, was, a, that was a horrible concussion. I've had, I've had a handful since, you know, but we're not – you know, I, I know how to protect myself. I know yeah. the science. If I do get a concussion, I'm not going to be wrestling for a month or two. I've talked yeah. to John about this before. He's like, mm-hmm. you know, if you get a concussion, you know, why not It'd take off six months? Because it, your brain is more important than 100%. And, you know, we, you know, you get to learn from the people before you as well and what that looks like. But I also get that, you know, pro wrestling is different and people kind of gauge concussions different too, as opposed to just getting like a dinger versus like a full on, like you're out for, for eight minutes, kind of a situation. Not that I condone that. I certainly no, no, no. But it's the same as the NFL. People get dingers there all the time yeah. and they go yeah. unreported. Right. Um, you know, it's just this contact sports, you know? Yeah. If it, yeah. If, if people, people are knowledge, knowledgeable enough, thanks to guys like Chris Nowinski mm-hmm. to know if a yeah. concussion happens, in a wrestling environment, they know that you, you got concussed. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no hiding some of that from some of these people, especially on TV, God. being in WWE yeah. or AEW and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so always, they know right away. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's like coming up with the protocols too, in terms of like, what happens here? Does the ref step in and make that call? And then the kind of deal with, you know, having talent being mad at you in the back or, or whatnot, because there are situations where a match gets called and then like shit goes down in the back, something like that. Um, but yeah, it was always a, like a weird, dark day in WWE when we would have the concussion meetings and Chris Nowinski would come in and we would all sit through the meetings and understand what, what goes on with CTE, what goes on with concussions. Cause as much as we all know, when you can have this conversation, when you have that reminder and you're looking at the video footage and the stats and all that. So it's like, yeah. it always just feels so weird afterwards of like, let's all protect our brains and our spines and all of that. Yeah, he's a couple of my videos. That was kind of <laughs> sitting in the meeting and then seeing yourself come up a couple of times. I'm like, oh, Fuck. Jesus Christ. Everyone's oh, looking at my you like, God. Oh, Crazy. Um, okay, so with the, um, you know, you do such crazy shit all the time from lighting things on fire to these big stunts, um, to crazy bumps. What is... What's like the psychology that you kind of hang your hat on with death matches? And now I am not the death match aficionado. I'm like death match adjacent. I like learn stuff through osmosis, through John, through what you guys do. Um, but it seems like maybe the death match scene has changed quite a bit over the years. What's your like take on that? Uh, death match wrestling, people, people that don't know me on the internet or try to criticize me. Uh, there's always, there's always a few things they say. One of them is uh, I was untrained, which basically it started off true, but I, I went to many wrestling schools. The other is I'm a death match goofball. Um, mm -hmm. I've only done about seven or eight death matches or what you would call death matches that had elements of death match in my career. So I've had close to a thousand matches now. I've been wrestling for 18 years, um, but it's just, it's changed a lot. But I think it's it's gotten crazier, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, guys are trying to up the ante, I think. But also at the same time, uh, referees and and promoters that promote death are more trained to, you know, death matches and ways to make them safe. Like back in the day in CCW in the early 2000s, no referee was – kicking out pieces large chunks of glass that could right. potentially stab you when you're taking a bump uh plus you know guys know how to take care of themselves um after a death match but still it is it is wild do uh, so you think it's gotten better it's gotten better in some aspects and gotten worse in others yeah because uh high risk high reward is very much a thing uh, because when I do a death match, I'm I'm trying to go crazy. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to bleed, and I'm trying to make moments that those fans, you know, remember for a while. And I, yeah. and I have. Yeah. Um, but some ways it's gotten better. Some ways it's gotten worse. The wrestling in the death matches have gotten a lot better. The wrestlers have gotten a lot better. Um, back in the day, a lot of death match wrestling was just like this all right, pick up something, smash, smash, you know, bleed, you right. know, it, now it's at least there's a, a, a good psychology to deathmatch wrestling and uh, the, the athletes are a lot better than they were, but, you know, wrestlers have to really take care of themselves if they want to live that lifestyle yeah. because it could lead to a, a, a addiction and a lot of other things. And we've seen sure. that in that, in that culture of deathmatch wrestling, a lot of people Certainly. getting addicted to stuff. So, yeah. You know, and you just mean because their bodies are so much more beat up that they're kind of relying on different things afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You yeah. know, things evolve, you know. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's always been a problem and issue in death match wrestling. Sure. And it still exists. But uh, you know, I think the guys are more knowledgeable and now they take care of themselves a little bit more than they did back in the day. It's it's really always kind of interesting to me, like watching that shift happen. Um, you know, even from like my time in WWE, from when I started to to when I wrapped up there, and you see so many more people that aren't drinking, that aren't out hanging out late at night. Like they're up early in the morning, they want to go to the coffee shops, they're trying to get in the gym. Like everyone's taking better care of themselves after watching 
you know, what the people before them have gone through and in all of that. But as it still continues to happen, even in other markets, like in death match wrestling, I guess, as people start to clean up their acts a little bit. Um, but you mentioned it a second ago about people saying that you, um, are a goofball death match guy or whatever. I don't even know. Do we want to talk about Jim Cornette? Are we going to talk about him at all? Do we even breathe his name? Do we care? It's just, uh, he, this guy, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what to say about him. I I did. Is he just saying shit to say shit? I don't honestly, I don't keep my finger on the pulse of it enough. Sometimes I just see the crazy shit. I'm like, this is nuts. It's so outlandish. Well, now he's kind of, you know, he knows his rhythm. He knows what mm-hmm. get, gets listeners. Mm-hmm. You know, not only is he making money from the amount of people who listen to his podcast and advertisers, but he's got, you, he's got, they upload like eight YouTube clips a day yeah, uh, on YouTube and they're, they're making the money from that. Uh, so he knows what gets the, gets the listeners and makes the money because he's not leaving his house. He's right. like a, I don't know what they call it, a gorf, gorphobic amen. or something. Oh, oh, he's, oh, is he actually? Yeah, he don't like to leave. I think he likes oh. to go to the supermarket and that's it. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he won't do appearances anymore or anything. This is all he has, his podcast. Oh, shit. He's gonna, oh my God. This is how he's going to live out the rest of his life, which might be two years, might be 10 years. Who knows? Because evil never dies. We all know that. <laughs> But wow. I just think he's outlandish. He's crazy. Sometimes I listen to him because I, I do find it entertaining. You know, I, I am a fan of the, as much as I like to wile up those fans and say, I'm trying to kill the business. You know, I, I love the, the olden days and the, the stories from back then and all the craziness. Sure. And, I, and I, I do appreciate some of his insight, but recently in the last two years, it's gone off the chain. I think he called your husband the worst wrestler of all time or something. I which did is just see crazy. that. I did see. I I know, and it is crazy. And I definitely like you know. Anytime you, see, I get more mad if I see someone talk shit about my husband than if I see someone talk shit about me. I'm like, excuse the f- you. What? Yeah, it drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah, I I I I've been attacked by his fans. His fans are the worst part of his culture because they they take everything he says gospel it, like what is his demo like who are his fans like what are who who is like the general kind of person that comes at you from like the Jim Cornette uh, army I would say they're maybe mid 30s okay to early 50s is like his demographic and uh, last week in LA some guy came to the show and he came to the so- show just for the sole intention to troll me what and I went up to him. He had a sign that says, Janela fears Brian Last. So I went up to him. And I just ripped the sign out of his hand. And he he had a meltdown. Uh, you know, and then that kind of kind of woke. It's kind of a wake up call for me because say these people have nothing to lose. Some of these people. And this is like their. Yeah, this is like their religion. This is right. their religion. Like Jim Cornette is the, the, the pastor of the church and they're going to drink his Kool-Aid. Oh, God, what a and, documentary uh, that would be. And I think sometimes, you know, I, I don't know. I might go out, you know, die back Daryl style. Some deranged fan comes in and, 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 and kills me because they believe every word he says and that I'm actually ruining the business they love, God. which is, is That's ridiculous. actually scary because the, the world is nuts right now that you have to like yes. legitimately, as much as you can like f- around and say something like that, we are in this world where everyone is like a little bit cuckoo bananas right now. Oh, Do you yeah. think about that? Like legit? Yeah, someone brought it up to me like last year. They're like, "What?" They're like, "Maybe you should calm down a little bit." Some of these people are actually crazy. Like they're sending Facebook messages to my mom. No. Uh, yeah, it's just, it got crazy. It's just sending me just the most deranged f- messages on my personal Facebook, on my mom's Facebook, family members, like Jim Cornette fans, uh, and you have to realize that so these people are a little bit crazy. Um, oh my god. But now everywhere I go, there's always at least one fan that is there for the sole intention of heckling me. I feel <laughs> but like it's we like, get you some like backup security. Can we invest in some security? Yes, yes. I, I'll, I'll put it in the budget with Brad. But yes. Security will probably be the guy, the same guy <laughs> who makes the deathmatch spider barbed wire net. We'll uh, take it. Listen, an extra yeah. body is an extra body. 
Yeah, it's just – yeah, it's things have gotten a little bit crazier because I do rile these people up. They think they think I'm thin-skinned, but by the abuse I get on the internet, I, I, you can't be thin-skinned in that scenario because I would be – I'd wash my hands of the wrestling business long ago if I was right. anyone else. Right. But people come up to me and they say, oh, listen – I was a Jim Cornette fan, but then I came to a GCW show and I saw you and I saw the way you connected with the audience. And I, mm-hmm. I seen the, how hard you worked and it changed my perception on you. But my perception on you was always that you were like 300 pounds or you were some kind of crackhead wrestler, but what? that's these echo chambers. They create, they just don't know. They make, them, they make themselves feel better. They don't, yeah. some of these people don't even know what I look like or, they they never see me ever. They just listen to the words of Cornette that I, he, he likes to say I'm some kind of drug addict that I'm th- that I'm, three hundred pounds that I'm this that I'm that. So these people, this is what they speculate that I am, and then they meet me and they're like, wait a second, this is Hold this on, is not yeah. what you're the, the, the trade as and sold a bill so, of bad goods. That's crazy. That I mean, I yeah. guess I mean I guess that's just true too. It's like so many people whatever you're listening, like whether it's wrestling or not, but you like hear a certain amount of information of people, people don't want to take that next step to do their own research that they just listen to the gospel of whoever spewing out whatever information. And um, yeah, that's a slippery slope. If I've ever seen one. Yikes. And it's, yeah. And it's crazy because when you look at it, how ridiculous wrestling is, it's half naked dudes wrestling each other. In you know, underwear, let's all calm like, down and just enjoy it for what it is. You know, it's just, you know, I, I said the other day, once, you know, you got past the attitude error, that was the tip of the iceberg. It was so crazy and outlandish. So where do you go after that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to treat this as entertainment. You can't, you, there's no way you can, Vince Russo, basically, you know, as much as I loved it as a, as a teenager, Vince Russo, ECW, all this responsible for but the death of the business, as they like to say, which is yeah. the business is not dead along with mixed martial arts came around that people mm-hmm. gravitated towards that. And the yeah. attitude error was just so ridiculous and so outlandish. People were giving birth, 80 year old women giving birth to, <laughs> to a hand hands, yeah. <laughs> uh, undertaker trying to murder people in Steve Austin and funeral homes. Once you yeah. reach that, to, you can't go back to that. This is a real sport. This right. you, you have to treat it as entertainment. And yeah. that's my view on it. And, my view is, and, and my view on myself is to get as much eyes and people saying my name as possible. So I'm going to keep on going on Twitter and I'm going to keep on fighting with these idiots. And, uh, you know, I'm sure someone's got to do it right. Go out there and yeah. Battle these goons. Yeah. I'm the, I'm one of the only people that actually, you know, waste their time. Well, it's with, true uh, though, but you put people. your neck on the line for other people as well. It's not that you're just going to bat for yourself. I mean, you really stick your neck out for your own friends as well. Um, I know it's something you were actually just recently talking about too, is like not a lot of people want to do that, but you are in a position where you do do that. What is like the motivation behind that? It's just uh, enough is enough. I just, I just think the professional wrestling as a whole is ridiculous. We all love it. You know, some people, you know, get into it and they they decide we want to get into this wacky profession and live out our dreams like me mm-hmm. like your husband and then there's other people who say i want to do this but then don't have the, the heart to do it either right. they go to wrestling school and they 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 fail out in the first week or you know they just never even attempted anyway and they're living these very normal lives and they want to they see someone like me that resembles them I'm not saying I, I resemble them. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I as think you're pretty as jacked. People. I'm going to say you're pretty I'm jacked. I'm not as jacked as. I'm going to go on record my... here and say you're pretty jacked. It, you know, <laughs> anyways, that's just my perspective from here. Carry on. <laughs> Especially like in AEW when I was like, I was going through that COVID era where I, I was like, wow, this is, this is terrible. You know, I getting out of shape and, and, and drinking a lot and then looking at TV and then not even caring anymore like yeah. this that's a weird so spot the- to be in right like when you see yourself back and you're just like whatever fucking i've i've been there before i've been there when i was like not happy with what i was doing and i'd see myself on camera and i'm like what the f-? yes. like yeah. i just look i'm like looking shit. back 
my outfits were bad. Like, I just felt like I was like, I don't know, throwing shit against the wall, but you can see like that decline and like trying to pull yourself out of that. It's, it's a weird spot to be in for sure. Yeah. I looked at myself and now I look at myself even more back then. I go, what the hell was I thinking? Yeah. You know, my fashion, my fashion choices outside of the ring were fine. My fashion choices in the ring, plus the way I looked, how out of shape I was and how I just, you know, looked on TV. I, I, I wouldn't go back now and watch any of that. Besides, I, such I would a cut bad it off. feeling, but when you're in it, you're in it. And it's, you know, what are you going to do? Lesson learned. If I, if uh, I can, I can watch everything from my, from my all in match with Adam page to the second match with Kenny Omega. That to me, that is my AEW career after that. I don't, I don't know. I came back for a couple, <laughs> that's it, a couple of good ones after that. But besides that, it was a wash, but, uh, yeah, it's just um, what the hell was I saying? Jesus Christ! See this um, ADD I, coming what, in. Like, we're, yeah, no, we were talking about something different than we started talking about bodies. Um. Uh, oh no, people see me. People see me, and they they compare me to 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 themselves. They compare me to their friends, saying, "Man, this guy kind of looks like us, but he's living our dream, traveling the and, world, getting traveling, do, yeah, getting paid." you know, having fun, uh, you know, just getting to see the world. And these people are very jealous people. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I compare it to. They're just jealous. You know, Haters. people said uh, a couple of weeks ago, they go, uh, I'm, I'm traveling the world, having a good time making money. And someone goes traveling the world. You mean driving to across country to gymnasiums? And then someone commented underneath that on Twitter. They said he was just in Belgium and Paris last week. And now he's in Australia this week. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? They're like, well, I don't see anything on Google about him being in Australia. It's like, oh, my God. These people, it's the narratives. It's just like yes. these false narratives. They're just yeah. trying to, you know, every every time someone comes out with something to disclaim what they say, they have to make up a whole new narrative or twist it. How exhausting. Just do, it's just, now it's just a part of daily life for me. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a lot of the GCW people, you know, it's getting there too for them that it's the same. God. Like, yeah, you just kind of want to like log off. It's nice to just like take it off your phone for a little bit and like not even f- see it because it's a lot. Even when you can kind of like laugh at it and whatever, there's still times that like either someone does like strike a chord with you or hits on a nerve, something like that. Like, it, no matter how thick your skin is, that stuff will still get to you. Yeah. Luckily, I have friends and Facebook groups and whatnot that we could share these tweets with each other and laugh yeah. about them. <laughs> right, the support right, right. system, you know, uh, but uh, yeah. I feel like I'm in like the, it's 2022. I'm in the, the like the movie, The Warriors, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. we're a gang, but now there's all these other internet subculture gangs that are attacking <laughs> me. There's yeah, the cornet the fans. Subways. Yeah. Then there's that. Then there's the 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 the, the teenagers with the anime, oh, the anime my, pictures yeah. coming yeah, after yeah, yeah. me. And then it's this group and that. What about group. the and fanfic it's... group? Do you get lumped into a lot of fanfic? Is that what you call it? Is it fanfic? Am I saying that <laughs> right? Am I old as fuck? <laughs> Is that the ones that write like the the fantasies? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I got. I, I think I got heat. I I almost got. I got canceled by that that group that subculture of uh, the internet because I found my fanfics and during COVID I read them over Instagram live. <laughs> and apparently that's a big no, no. What? And Why? Was, because you, you know, ruined the fantasy. I'm not, supposed, I'm not supposed to see it and I'm not supposed <laughs> to read it out. We read them out on Instagram live. So there was kind of like a, a cancellation in that department for <laughs> Joe Janela. So there's probably none of those anymore. That's so, so weird. You think they would be clamoring for you to read it out loud, but you thought you crossed the line. Oh, I crossed the you line. Are. They actually, some of them, some of them actually changed everything for my name. They changed my name. They just inserted Adam Page's name. <laughs> so I got, so, I, so I got wiped weird. out off the fan fix. So they just replaced me with Adam Page <laughs> said, he's the, He's the better one. Joey Janela is the asshole. Let's never write about him again. Wow. 
That's so funny. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the nuances and other subcultures. Who knew? I had not a clue. Um, talk to me about Sunny Kiss because I loved when you guys were tagging together, getting into your feud together. What what all happened there, and what was um what started you guys working together? Because it was awesome. Uh, Cody. Uh, Cody. I don't know. He was just trying to. Th- I think he was just throwing shit at a wall. Uh, there was a big sh- show coming up in Jersey at the Prudential Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the one that got canceled due to COVID. Got it. So they're like, what do we do with Joey and Sunny Kiss? It's a hometown gig for them. Let's just team them up. So that show got canceled. And then eventually in COVID, I think Cody was just like, let's let's roll with it. So I said, I got this idea for these vignettes. Let's see these vignettes that they're like 1980s, like Miami Vice. But the dynamic is so different because I'm the the cis white male and Sunny Kiss is the flamboyant, you know, representative of the LGBT community. Yeah. And I and I wanted to tell a story where I was down on my luck that I did these matches with Moxie. I did these matches with Omega and they were world renowned. Everyone was talking about them. Then COVID happened and I was in shambles. And Sunny Kiss is like, well, I'm from Jersey. You're from Jersey. Let's let's get back on our feet together, you know? So Cody paid. He's like, that's a great idea. Cody, out of his own pocket, paid for these vignettes. That oh, took wow. Like, it took, like, seriously, like, 15 hours to film. So it's edited. We watched it. We're like, wow, this is, this is really good stuff. This is really awesome. Cody was like, it's really good. We sh- they showed it to Tony. Tony hated it. Oh no! He hated these promos. Thought they were phony, fake. He he hates it. He hates the invisible camera. He hates the cinematic stuff, which they've done a lot more. But maybe it was just because it was me, um, and he knew I was actually going to get over this time. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, everyone loved it. We had to like convince. I had to like beg him, like, listen, let's. We have to put this on TV. You know, we have to. You know. Like this is this could change the direction that me and Sonny's careers are going. Yeah, and we got it on TV, uh, like a certain like kind of edited down version of what we put out, and still it would just got people were talking about it, you know, all over. It was trending on on Twitter. This video, Eric Bischoff was he, he watched it. He said, "Oh, that was one of the greatest promos I've ever seen in my life." Yeah, uh, he said that this was really awesome, but. You know, I, that wasn't in the, the intentions that Tony had with us. So yeah. he didn't like the video. And from there, we kind of just like, just, you know, we, we wrestled Brody and Cole Cabana. And mm-hmm. I think that was one of Brody's first matches in on, on TV. Wow. Um, we did that and, you know, we, we had that and that was it. Uh, we did something with Chris Jericho and, jk or we had like a no disqualification match that was pretty all right but yeah for that for for those times oh that's a bummer right. that's such a bummer i mean i as soon as i saw the pairing of you two i was like oh my god i love this dynamic i mean as everybody else obviously felt the same way that's too bad that it kind of fell between the cracks like that do you let stuff like that linger when you feel like it was a great opportunity that you weren't able to follow through on it was definitely i, I that was like probably the, that's I don't regret anything about my AW run. The things I regret are, is not getting an action figure. And <laughs> That's annoying, right? Yeah. Not, shit. not pushing on keeping, if we did a, a little promo package like that every other week or every week yeah, and uh, built that up, I, I'm sure it would have been, our careers would have been a lot different at this point. Um, but it, it's just, uh, you know, when I felt like it was time, I said, listen, this is time for, Tony said, listen, we gotta, we want to bring you back to TV. So we have to figure out a way to get out of this sunny kiss tag. So yeah. Cody let me create this whole storyline where I broke up with Sonny and they let me, I would just go to QT or Cody or whatever. And really dark is not Tony's priority. It's really just to, to pad the records for, for storyline purposes. So I would just go to Cody or I would go to QT and I'd say, all right, this is what we're doing this week. This is what I'm doing this week. Yeah. And you go, okay. And I, I did that. And there was a couple of weeks where they didn't bring me out the TV. So it went on way too long, but the payoff was good with me and Sonny 
And unfortunately, I beat Sonny in that last match because the plans were to bring me and Kayla back to uh, TV. Okay. So Tony was like, all right, you go up and that's it. We'll bring you back to TV. But the situations happen and uh, who knows what would have happened. You know, uh, yeah. you know, there was times in my AW run where I was like, listen, during COVID, I said, all right, I can't take this anymore. There's no fans. I'm resting at three o'clock in the morning. That's and then nice. I also, I have to deal with all these idiots on the internet who I'm under the spotlight right now. Right. And uh, it's not worth the mental health issues. It's not worth the just going on the internet and just seeing your name, just getting dragged through the mud every day. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, would, I would go to Brett Lauderdale, who's a promoter, a GCW owner, and John Carlo mm-hmm. Didimo, who I'm in the group chat with. Basically, that's mm-hmm. how the gears, the mm-hmm. gears rolled in uh, turn in GCW, who now yeah. works in he's now a producer at AEW. I go, I'm quitting today. And they would go, what are you doing? Don't quit. I said, I'm quitting. I'm done with this. I said, they said, but you're getting a paycheck every two weeks. There's people out of work right now that are homeless. that can't feed themselves because COVID. And I said, nah, I don't care. I'm going to go, I'll go Uber Eats or I'll go, I'll go do this or do that. And uh, they're like, no, 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 just, just wait it out. Wait it out to the contract. And I said, okay, okay. So then I waited out, waited out. And, uh, and then there was a time that uh, as soon as COVID was over, I got motivated again, decided to get back into shape, you know, change my look, almost look like a rest- wrestler. <laughs> but there was a time where I thought like things were going to go a different way after yeah. me and Sonny broke up. And, you know, I was obviously working hard and my matches were, even though my matches were mostly only on dark, people were still still getting a, a good amount of buzz. Me and Sunny Kiss on the on yeah. uh, Twitter and stuff. So I thought my career was going to go a different way, and I told Sean Ross Sapp in September that I think I'm going to get renewed, and we're just going to go on, you know, and and see what happens. But then from there to January, I don't know what happened. Uh, mm. Just. Stuff happens. It's wrestling. Never say yeah. never. I don't think there's any bridges burnt right now, at least not on my side. There could yeah. be on his side. But, uh, yeah, never say never. And uh, it's professional wrestling. Is there anything you know. that you would have done differently when it comes to, like, I guess, like, playing the political game of, like, being that person that's always in Tony's ear or pitching different ideas or whatever? Like, do you, do you um, reflect on it in that way at all? I pitched a lot of ideas to him at the beginning and stuff. Yeah. And uh, no, I'm not a political guy, you know. I hate yeah, things that got, aspect too. Yeah, things were very, you know, things there were kind of the opposite of WWE. That's why mm-hmm. guys were coming over and they were like, wow, this is great politics yeah. here. There's no politics. Everyone's just friends and they hang out. But, you know, the bigger you get, you know, the way – the wave changes there and things sure. change and sure. uh as the world turns you know things are not like they were when i first started there yeah so but that's that's the thing you know uh for someone like me you know who's just this indie guy who likes to go on twitter and uh battle with fans with three followers on a daily <laughs> basis and do stupid shit like light my foot on fire oh my god and yeah just, you're a madman yeah just a complete madman to someone like on the inside you know i might not be worth that <laughs> investment anymore so but who knows you know one day uh maybe we can uh we can revisit it and yeah, see yeah if, if certainly it well, i mean out. i i don't you know i there's obviously plenty of value there so i, I wouldn't say that i think um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that it went that way, but on the other side of things, it's like, you are, you, yeah, you were just in Paris and Belgium and Australia and Montreal and being able to travel all over the world and having the matches that you want to have and doing the things that you want to do. Um, what about the acting side of things? Cause I did see the clip from that music video that you did and it was quite compelling. How do we feel yeah. about the acting side of things? Uh, you know what? Um, I've been thinking about it a lot more and more. Yeah, uh, that was just an opportunity. I knew Chris Webby for a while, 
Uh, I did one of his videos through Emilio Sparks, friend John Sparks. He came out with an album called The Sparks Foundation, whatever compilation. A lot of uh, sparks. Yeah, a lot of sparks. It was like a, a rap mixtape where they took old uh, wrestling entrance themes and mixed them into uh, to, uh, rap songs with a lot of big time rappers on there. And John Sparks was like, listen, you want to come be in this video with Chris Webby and Taz River? I said, okay. So we did that. I met him. And then, what is it? That was 2004, I think. Maybe 2000. You have to ask me. It might be 2005. I know 2015, I mean. Jesus Christ. We're going to. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was a long uh, time ago. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 the concussion. So 2015, I, 2014, 2015. So I did okay. that. So they said they needed some guy who, you know, would get down in this video in 2022. And I was the guy. And uh, great. Kind of just crushed it. Um, crushed it. Kind of crushed it, that video, for sure. Yeah. And uh, it was it was great. It was great fun. And uh, I was saying, like, listen, uh, you know, I can, I've always been, uh, you know, once I get my mindset on something and I work hard towards it, I can probably do something with some acting. And yeah. uh, I was going to move to LA in September. Mm. Um, but it's smack in be- my move out date in Orlando smack between a, a Japanese tour and the tour of England. Oh, oh there I hey go. Now. <laughs> Come on, Terry. <laughs> Come through Terry Funk. Son of a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> so it just didn't pan out to get out to LA. Yeah. The move to LA between those two travel dates, moving cross country. It's just not going to work out at this moment, but uh, I have friends there. Why don't there you just and- sign like a little tiny, ex- can you do like a, a little like half extension on your place in Orlando and then head out West? Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. So yeah. I think, I think I want to move to LA. I know it's expensive, but it's worth Rock it because it. Uh, everyone says, listen, you can not only do the acting, you can do the stunt work. Yes. And, uh, I've often is- wondered why more wrestlers don't get into doing stunt work. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why not? That's what the right money there. is. Yeah. No, the no mo- doubt. Um, what kind of acting would you want to do when you see certain actors? What do you see that you're like, I could do that. That should have been me. Put me in coach. I've been doing like little acting things since I was like a teenager. Cause I like, oh. so my friend, my friend, uh, my friend, Jim McKenzie, he's like a, he's a very, he's a pretty big deal artist right now, but he does everything. He, he's, he's very, he was inclined and in anything he touched turned to gold. He can edit videos or direct music videos or make statues or make paintings or yeah, just like pick up a guitar and hear a song. And he was like one of those people, maybe like you would say, maybe like he had like was on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> on <laughs> so, the spectrum, but, focus it on, get some yeah, shit done. Respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, like very good at everything yeah this guy uh but he would do like little we do like we get a video he'd get a video opportunity to film like a music video for a rapper and then say all right i need my friends to play these parts <laughs> so i've always been doing stuff like that and now he's in la and uh he's directing all these things and uh he's like yeah he's like i i'm gonna need de- I, I need you for these projects now so I have that right. now, I, the music videos and, uh, you know, potentially stunt work. So I think I'd yeah. be pretty good in LA. Uh, 100%. The, on top of the wrestling too. Yeah. And I get to hang out at the rainbow room. Whenever. <laughs> yeah. So, that was works too. So. <laughs> Great spot to hang out in. That's, yes. that's for damn sure. Good food too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty decent food if the service is all right. Yeah. But, uh, It would just be nice too, I think, to like, there's definitely something to changing up the scenery, going somewhere new, kind of, you know, just invigorating uh, a a next chapter in your life, I guess. Yeah, I've been in Orlando for three years for absolutely no fucking reason. Uh, Most people have to move here because they they get a job at the WWE and, uh, you know, they have to go to the performance center every day. I moved here because an ex-girlfriend and within three months, it did not work out. No. uh, Instead of going back to Jersey, I just got, I'm stuck here now. Uh, Probably cheaper I, there than Jersey though, right? Is Jersey, Jersey's got to be still pretty pricey, yeah? Cheaper here, but the thing is, my That's apartment is state. very expensive. 
Oh. And uh, it's basically just at this point, just a dirty storage unit full of action figures. Great. I'm never here. I'm never home. Uh, I just come here maybe twice a month just to take a shower and sleep a couple of days. And then I go back mm-hmm. on the road. So at this point, I would be more inclined not to pay rent anywhere, throw all my toys in a storage unit and just <laughs> that's it. Be a, live the yeah. gypsy life. I remember John was kind of like that when we first got together, he had his apartment in Vegas. And I remember when I like first flew out there to like visit him, I was like, the f- is this? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, there was nothing there because he didn't have to be there. He lived on the road pretty much all the time. So there was no need to like move into every little corner, every nook and cranny of the apartment. Um, but yeah, save some money. Why not? Yeah. You made me look around my apartment. I'm like, wow, this place is a f- wreck. What is it like when you bring um, a date back there? Oh, very rare. Very <laughs> rare these days. That's so like, apartment is so messy right now. Like I have oh, shit God. everywhere. Like it's like, got toys, got, got sweatshirts, <laughs> ultimate with the kites. Oh my God. <laughs> gremlins, gremlins. Oh, okay, I'm blocking it. Flags. Kind of see Just it. random boxes of of nonsense oh my god all over the place i love it so, that bam bam bigelow picture up at the top is kind of cool oh yeah yeah yeah. it's a nice little painting there dave cole did that one and said it mm. to me because i'm from that area um but yeah it's just a i the the, the the object is keep the bedroom nice yes and somewhat clean clean sheets don't are look key. at my don't look at my closet because it's <laughs> I have ADD so severe that I can't hang on my clothes. So it's just a pile of oh my clothes God. in the closet. Fuck. And then you just dim the lights of the living room and the kitchen so they can't see the mess they're <laughs> walking through. You guide them through and then you walk them right to the nice candlelit bedroom. And that's that's how it is. <laughs> Whatever gets the job done to set a little romance and they don't have to see every little. No one has to walk in there with um, with a UV light. It's fine. No, 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 no UV lights. Please, (laughs) please walk in the bathroom with your own discretion as well. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Tread lightly, please. And thank you. Yep. Oh, I love it. Well, Joey, I'm so glad I got to have you on here. We got to catch up, hang out a little bit more about you. Finally. I know. Finally. Um, I'm super excited for you though. I mean, you're still, you're traveling the world. You're doing your thing. You're doing everything on your own terms. And I think this LA move is going to be cool as all hell. 